Unmarked anchorage in deep space between GRNV-1 and Kim-23, Golovrik kyoshian Front. January 31st, 3506. Kazdan was furious. Those monsters have turned even his mother against him. His one hope is that the Kalmazar Emperor would not kill her without giving him a chance to capture her. No, not capture, save her. He will save his mother and his sisters if they are still alive. He will restore his empire and wipe humanity out. He will bring honor to his name. My prince, we are on the final approach. The pilot of the stealth corvette he was traveling on said through the intercom. Good, we need to take the advantage of our enemy's missed chance to capture me, he said back. It was odd the humans moved their ambassadors around in one of their carriers, and yet they didn't move to intercept him even after the pilot said that they had a lock on them. So much had happened. How could have those monsters made themselves legacies? Their race can live comfortably for around a hundred loops, and yet they have had six ambassadors already. Why would his mother side with them? And why did that Fingrad Katvalin start a rebellion? And more importantly, why did it feel like the monster looked so disappointed when he refused his mother's request? So many questions. The Corvette shuddered as it was magnetically locked with the station. You are free to unhook and move about the ship. Thank you for the honor of traveling you, my prince, the pilot said as the boarding ramp lowered. The sound of the Imperial Symphony began to play as he walked down the ramp to an awaiting entourage of admirals, lords, and generals, all in a kneeling bow to him, waiting for his click to rise, the way it was meant to be, like it was for his father and grandfather, and every emperor before him. But he wasn't the emperor, not yet. He needed his seat first and let his pincers click. They all rose slowly and looked at him. My prince, how was your flight? Asked a lord whose name escaped the prince. It was surprising but uneventful. Thank you. Kazdan said back. I trust that all the preparations are ready, he said, turning a bit to his left, towards his former guard captain, now Grand Warmaster. Yes, my prince, we have received confirmations from all battle groups. What's more, all Kozak forces have made planetfall covertly and are getting ready to start, the Grand Warmaster said back quickly. And our supporters, said the prince. We have received word from all but the ones on the home world. They are all ready to rise against the monsters. The Grand War Master said, How did the council meeting unfold? The monsters have been switching their ambassadors too quickly. They are now classed as legacies of the council and have the full support of the Larishi. Alas, the motion to purge them would have failed, so the vote for it was vetoed. The prince said and then sigh hard, The next bit will make things so much worse. Moreover, our imperial allies have been dragged into a civil war with Katvalin rebels so we will have to fight for a while on our own. That will not be a problem. The Katval can't fight the Empire, one general said. Yes, we all know that is the case. However, the monsters, Larishi and Kalariusins, all have pledged to support their war. So, no, we may have to fight this war mostly on our own. The Kalarius have joined with the Katval, one lord said, confusion evident on his face. It would make sense the Calarius technocracy is a highly isolationist nation. They only sell munitions and ship templates. They don't wage wars and they definitely don't fight for others. The Calarius said that his race was indebted to the Katval and would pay them back, the prince said, which only led to more speculation. The group reached the situation room and watched the hollow map of the sector and a few collections of techs at different stations around the room. The prince walked to the raised platform where a throne was placed and sat down. Open a channel to all markers, he said loudly, and watch as the tech scrambled to get everything ready. And then finally the head tech looked at him and nodded. This is Crown Prince Kasdan to all true Galavricks. I am declaring a rise, a rise to our honor, to our pride, to our imperium. Rise now for our history and culture. Rise now not for the weak, but for those who have died. Rise now to reach for your birthright. The monsters at our gates have bitten at our name, and now we bite back. The Galavric Imperium have not gone to the grave. We now strike out at our enemies. Show them wrath, show them fury, show them your hate, show them our power, show them fire, show them pain. For we will not be forgotten and we will never surrender. All hail the Imperium, the prince announced into the room. The room was silent for a second, then a thunderous applause rang out as everyone was on their feet. Nationalism, that's what the monsters called it. He hated it. 
They have been forced to use the monster's technology and tactics, even words, sometimes. But there was one word that they both have. War, and he would make sure the monsters feel it. He watched as different solar systems switched from blue to green as different parts of his army were taking action. It was satisfying to see. They had the outer edge of his former empire and three core systems in about ten lesser cycles, like a perfectly executed version of his plan. But something threw him off. Too many techs were talking with their supervisor, of whom none had said anything. You, what is all the commotion about? Kazdan said while pointing at a supervisor that had just received a report. The young Galavrik almost fell over at the sudden address. Well, he paused and looked to the report in his hand. All of our forces on Alina have reported no opposition, he hesitated. Or civilians, the world is effectively abandoned. My prince. What the jally is, are you saying? The prince yelled. What do you mean abandoned Alina was the empire's breadbasket? How could it be abandoned? My prince, I don't know, but it's true. And not just Alina, all of the systems we have taken are empty, the supervisor said in fear. None of our forces have made contact with the enemy. Kazdan froze, and his plan rallied on his forces to capture worlds and their civilians. He was going to press them to supply the war effort. He was winning, so why did he feel cheated? Why would they abandon their homes? Where did those people even go? Admiral Jice, General Kosmar, you are to take command of the 12th Battle Group and attack the Kakval system. Kill anyone who stands in your way and find me those civilians. The prince said, Have Battle Group 6 and 14 reinforce the 12th and someone check on the Fingrad spies. I want to know how this information failed to reach us. Galamar, War Room of the Palace, Galavrik Kiyoshi in front, January 30th, 3506. The room where the fallen Galavrak Emperor once made plans was a marvel of architecture. Prestigious marble walls and floor lined by solar forged gold, the long window that shone even in the night as the crystal lattice returned the energy they took in during the day. If Salius wasn't tired before now, she certainly was now. How it wasn't the time. She had a task her people entrusted to her, and she would see it through. She looked around the room, her daughters were all there now dressed in military uniforms of their respective positions, along with the contingent of Terran admirals. There were also a handful of non-royal generals and admirals, taking the place of her lost sons. The Terran's FTL was much faster than most other races, and always made her a bit sick after they dropped back to real space. But she was thankful. She hadn't had the time to change into the full war regalia of her people, but she was here far earlier than her son would be to his control center, and she would capitalize on this. You all have by now heard the news, or at the least seen the footage of the council meeting. Prince Kasdan has returned, she said watching as some of her more hopeful daughters lit up with joy. However, he wishes to chase the failed dreams of my great-grandfather, and so has declared war on this nation. She watched as those who had hoped against the reality that war would be avoided, be crashed under her words. It hurt her just as much. He is most likely her last son, and he was her brightest, truly talented, and capable of many wonderful things. Yet now he was blind. The prince plans to take a hold of our outer systems along with Alina, Hinosa, and Kiaso. He plans to starve us out, to erode our power. However, he has not walked our worlds or seen our people. The breadbasket he plans to hold is no longer a truth to our nation. So, he can have his lightning strike, and we will have a grand time letting him chase our shadows. She said with confidence in the plan they had made, and nodded to her eldest daughter. As her eldest stood up, the hollow map of the nation manifested from the table. We will be activating the contingency plan Fabian Void. As outlined in step one, our fleets and transports will immediately depart to their assigned systems and evacuate everyone there to one of the following systems, she said like she was reading out of the plan's document itself. Once that's done, we will launch raids on his deep space outpost and listening stations. Our plan isn't to destroy them, but to damage them. He will, of course, find out about the evacuation and will try to take one of three systems. We will have three fleets waiting in deep space. Once his fleet is engaged, we will jump in behind. Our overall objective is to capture as many of their personnel as possible. However, you are all authorized to use as much force as you believe is necessary.
Our intel is good. Our spies have made many double agents, however. We need to know where my idiot brother is. She sat back down. Thank you, Kyla, Salia said calmly before turning to the Terrans. Please remember that while most of our nation remembers the horrors of the final night, some still cling to the hate of the old Galavric. If you encounter such people, allow us to handle them. The four admirals saluted her and said in unison, Yes, ma'am. Good. Now go. I don't wish for a long war. The sooner we get it done, the sooner I can sleep, she said, rising from her seat, as everyone gave their salute as she left the room. It took her the better part of a unit to reach her chamber. It was quiet here, and she was finally alone, and it all rushed back to her. The joy of her son alive and healthy, the pain at his words and actions, the grief at his hate of her and her people. And then finally, in the cold dark where none could see her, she cried. Council Station, Office of the Kalmazar Empire, January 31, 3506. Lanha sat in silence, her former guards now turn wardens, watching every move she made. Why did she do that? Why did she spark a rebellion? Why risk her people for humans? No, not for humans, for themselves. Her people were subjected just after figuring out FTL and have been slaves ever since. They had tried to revolt before but failed, and the price they paid was steep. But she and her mother wore it, the last of the Katval monarchy, and she will see her people free. Free to choose their wars and treaties, free to love and live, free to do what they wished and not be forced to do what the Empire wants. Then her terminal started blinking. She looked at what it was. The Emperor was attempting to contact her. What that Galia cursed waste of air want now, she thought, and activated the connection. She watched as the Emperor's royal face mask came into focus. Ah, Lanha, he said in a sickeningly sweet voice. I hear from your aides that you followed my orders to the latter, however not the full meaning. They say that you have declared a rebellion, is this true? Lan Ha was seething. This fool would doom her people. Yes, she said back. I did because you would doom your empire for a runaway prince. You will not have my people's lives of this. I see, that is... He paused like he was thinking over his actions, though she could see it was an act. An unfortunate turn of events. You will surrender to your guards and aid, he said harshly. If you do not, I will be happy to send you the head of your mother. Lan Ha's heart sank. She had held to false hope he would leave her out of this, that she would be safe because of Kalmazar's code of honor. But she should have known better that man doesn't care. She had known him all his life. They grew up together and studied together, but he was always vile. If you harm a hair in her mane, I will kill you myself, Lana roared at him. As she was about to continue, the alarms bleared to life and the red emergency lights kicked to on. She ignored the emperor's words as the announcement rang out. Brace for impact. Repeat, brace for impact. Some madman is ramming the station, she thought, but went pale as she saw something out her viewing wall. There in the void was a small cylindrical object flying fast at her office. You coward, she roared at the emperor. I see you would rather kill me out right then. She was interrupted as the object hit home, breaking right through the reinforced wall next to the viewing wall. Yet no explosion came to kill her. Instead, a group of six piled out. She saw the blackened carapace armor of their suits and the red visors in their helmets. They were Kalariosans. She was sure of it. One of them moved to her, keeping their weapon aimed at the door, while the other did the same from where they were. Are you Lanha? What? She stammered. Um, yes, I am Lanha. Good. I thought we missed, they said as they put their weapon away and removed a large sack from their back. Please put this one. It is a void suit that can resize itself. It is made with a Katvalan's forms in mind, handing the sack to her. Lana, if you leave, I will kill your mother, the emperor yelled, witnessing the event unfolding in front of him. Lana stopped. Could she do this? Should she? She wasn't sure. She began to pull back, and the Calarius saw it and touched her hand. Your mother is safe. We got her before coming for you. We promise your late grandfather that we will do everything we can to free your people, and we fully intend to do so. The soldier said softly in Catvern, so please come with us. Your people need you. Lana was taken aback. The Calarius had broken intergalactic law by rescuing her. They had saved her mother from the center of the empire. They were keeping their promise to her grandfather, 
All the hope she once had came kicking and screaming back into her being. She will see her people free. Go fuck yourself, she roared at the emperor. You are speaking to the granddaughter of Lahidin, late king of the Katval Star Kingdom, and I will not be cowed by that likes of parasites like you. She got the suit on quickly and turned to the soldier. Take me to my mother.